Hi. In this video, we'll be looking at JavaScript versus Carol. At this point, we've been writing a lot of JavaScript programs. We've written a lot of Carol programs. So we'll take a moment to reflect, think about the similarities and differences there, and see how they're actually pretty closely connected. We'll kind of peel back the layers of abstraction that Carol provides on top of JavaScript. So I want you to think about, you've written some JavaScript programs, you've written some Carol programs. What have you noticed that is similar when programming in JavaScript versus programming with Carol? What have you noticed that's different? So think about that for a moment and then continue the video. So a lot of things are actually the same when we go from Carol to JavaScript. Loops are the same, if else statements, functions, parameters, comments. These are all exactly the same whether you're writing a Carol program or a JavaScript program. What's different? Well, we didn't use variables in Carol except during for loops. Uh, the code highlighted when we ran the code, we could see each line highlighting, but that's not really a difference in the language. That's more a difference in the programming environment. We could see it run. Uh, and really the big difference was that move and turn left and take ball and put ball, these somehow just worked. We could just type those and Carol knew what to do. We didn't have to teach Carol these commands. So what's going on there? That, that's the huge difference is that Carol has these extra commands that we can just type and they work without any definition. So the secret here is that Carol really is JavaScript. A Carol program is a JavaScript program. When you were writing Carol programs, you were writing JavaScript code. The only difference was that these built-in functions like move and turn left and take ball and put ball, they were built into the language itself. You didn't have to define them on your own. Then when you went to JavaScript, you could no longer type out these commands. You can't type in move, you can't type in turn left and have the program know what to do. And that's because they're not part of the standard library. So every programming language has a standard library. JavaScript, Python, C++, they all have a standard library. And the standard library is the baseline plain version of the language. It has all of the built-in functions that you're allowed to use. But a lot of times the standard library isn't enough. We want to do something very special and we want some added tools on top of the standard tools to help us do this special task. This is where APIs come in. So what are APIs? Well, APIs are application programming interfaces. And an application programming interface is a set of tools for building programs. It's tools on top of the standard base toolbox. So an API stands for application programming interface. That's not that important. What is important is what an API means. And an API is just a set of tools for building software, for building programs. There's this great quote from Wikipedia, a good API makes it easier to develop a program by providing all of the building blocks, which are then put together by the programmer. So rather than having to make these building blocks ourselves, an API finds building blocks that are very commonly needed by a lot of different programs and says, here, we've taken care of building these blocks for you. Now use these in your own program. And so that's exactly what happened with Carol. Carol is an API. Carol is an API built in JavaScript to make it easier to build cool programs quickly. When we were using the Carol API, we could write these JavaScript programs that did awesome things. It had Carol solve all these puzzles and we didn't have to define move and turn left ourselves. The Carol API abstracts away the complex detail involved in getting this image of Carol to move across the screen. That's actually a pretty complicated thing to do in JavaScript. And it would be a real bummer if every time we went to write a Carol program, we had to teach Carol to move and teach Carol to turn left those should come standard. So the Carol API makes it so that these are added to the standard library. So what is the Carol API? What's provided? Well, these are the extra commands added on top of the standard library when we use the Carol API. We can use move, put ball, take ball, and turn left. That was it. When we wanted Carol to turn right, we used turn left as one of the building blocks. We also had the Carol conditions. We could ask Carol, is the front clear? Is the front blocked? Are there balls present? Are there no balls present? These are extra built-in commands that are in the Carol API. We don't have to define these ourselves. So the extra Carol commands were all written in JavaScript behind the scenes. That was just done for you. You didn't have to define all these functions behind the scenes. By providing these commands as an API, then you as the programmer, you don't have to rewrite them every single time and you don't have to worry about how they work. They've been abstracted away. This allows you to build these cool programs very quickly. Now, documentation is a huge part of every API. Because they're not standard, you need them to be well-documented so that programmers know how to use it. So documentation provides information to show programmers how to use the API. 
And we saw this in the editor, we could go to the docs tab and get documentation for exactly how to use the given API. So this is the super Carol documentation. So it has move, turn left, turn right, turn around, put ball and take ball. And we had examples and use cases of how to use all these built-in commands. Now it goes much further than Carol though. There are other APIs. There are so many other APIs besides just Carol. In fact, there are APIs for almost every programming language that make these common tasks very easy. It gives you higher level, higher abstraction building blocks to build really cool programs with. So a lot of times companies like Twitter and Facebook and Spotify, they will provide their own API so that other programs can interact with their website and their data. This is why when you're using an app on your phone, you can connect it to Facebook or you can send a tweet from a website that's not Twitter. Twitter provides an API that says, hey, if you're building a website, I'm gonna allow you to let your users tweet from your website because that gets more traffic on Twitter, it looks good on Twitter, and it lets users be able to tweet from different websites. So a lot of companies have their own APIs that programmers can use to integrate with those services. Um, one example API is chart.js. So this is a JavaScript API that makes it really easy for you to make charts. So if you have the chart API installed in your program, then you're allowed to create chart variables just like you would create a circle variable or a rectangle variable. It makes it so that this chart is part of the language. Spotify has an API as well, and parts of it aren't even in JavaScript. Parts of it are just straight HTML. So the Spotify API allows you to add a Spotify music player right on your own web page. So you can put a Spotify music player on your homepage. And the code for that is pretty simple. All you have to do is put a single iframe tag with the proper um, properties, the source and the width and the height, things like this. So Spotify allows other websites to have a little mini version of Spotify on the website. So those are APIs, they're present in every language. And now that we've seen how Carol is really just an API on top of JavaScript, let's dive in and see exactly how Carol is implemented in plain old JavaScript. Let's see how that works behind the scenes so we can get, a, get an idea of how complicated it is to make Carol move and turn around the screen. All right, so in this program, we're going to make Carol from scratch without using the Carol API. So the goal in this program is to set up Carol's world with Carol in the bottom left corner facing east. So far, we just have a standard JavaScript program. I've made a lot of constants for properties about the world. Uh, here is Carol's image. So if we go to this URL, this is actually the image of Carol that we'll be using. So that's the Carol image we'll be moving across the screen. Um, I've set the world width and height, the number of streets, things like that. And so far we're setting the size of the window and I just wrote a double for loop, nested for loop to loop across and add a circle at every street and avenue. So, so far the program looks like this. Great, so we already have a world that looks like Carol's world. Let's just add Carol to the screen. So I have two variables, Carol and direction. Uh, these are gonna be global variables. So one's gonna keep track of Carol, one's gonna keep track of Carol's direction. So Carol is going to be an image. And this is a new class, it's called the web image class. It's just like circle and rectangle. If we wanna make a new image, we say Carol equals new web image. And we pass as a parameter the URL of the image. And so that is the Carol image URL. So let's use this and add that to the screen and see what we get. And there we go. So we got Carol on the screen, but Carol is way too big. So we're gonna need to set Carol's size to be equal to just one of these grids. So we have this nifty little constant right here, Carol size. So it's the exact same as the street height. We want Carol to be the same height as the street. So we'll do Carol, that set size. The width should be Carol size and the height should be Carol size. Carol is a square size. Now let's see what that does. Great, so now Carol's in the upper left corner. We want Carol down here. So really we want the upper left corner to not be at zero, zero. We want it to be zero in the X direction, but in the Y direction, we want it to be the entire height minus one Carol height. So we'll do Carol at set position zero in the X and then world height minus Carol size. And then add Carol to the screen. Awesome, so we've set up Carol's world and we need to make sure that the direction is properly set. The direction should be east. 
great. And I've just defined constants for each of the directions. And so now we've set up Carol's world. Now let's try to teach Carol how to turn left. All right, so here we have our program that sets up the world and then it's gonna have Carol turn left. So we have the setup world function working. Carol shows up in the bottom left corner facing east. But if we run this, we see that nothing happens. Carol doesn't actually turn left. That's because turn left doesn't do anything yet. It's not part of the standard library, so we have to define it. We have to define this part of the API. So there's actually a rotation function that we can use on any graphical object, circle, square, rectangle, web image, whatever. If we go to docs and we go to rotation, we can see that there's actually this rotate function, dot rotate, and it rotates the object this many degrees. So let's try that. Let's just have Carol rotate 90 degrees. So Carol dot rotate. 90. Let's see what that does. Ooh, Carol rotated the wrong way. So that actually is rotating clockwise. We need Carol to rotate left counterclockwise. So let's go negative 90 degrees. Awesome. There we go. Now, Carol, the image is facing the right way. But if we print out the direction, we see that, ooh, Carol still thinks that Carol's facing east. So we got to properly set the direction. So to do that, it's going to be a series of if statements. If Carol was east, then Carol should now be north, and so on. So if direction is east, we actually have a constant for that, east, well, then direction should now be north. Otherwise, if the direction was, let me put this on its own line. Otherwise, if it was north, then it should now be west. Else, if direction was west, then it should now be south. And lastly, it must have been south, so it should now be west. Great. So now let's try this. We'll print out direction to make sure it worked correctly. Great, Carol's facing north. Let's try turning left twice and see what that does. Okay, so Carol turned left twice, but we're not getting that nice animation. We're not getting it so that Carol turns, then pauses, then turns, and then pauses like we did in the original Carol programs. And that's because the runner is a little bit different. We don't get to pause at each step. If we want to, we can actually use a built-in function called set, it's called set timeout. Um, that will actually wait to call it. So let's say we wanted to call turn left after waiting. We could say set timeout. What do we want to call? The turn left function. And we want to wait, pause milliseconds. So pause time is a thousand. So that many milliseconds. And then the second turn left shouldn't be called until the first one's done. So this one has to wait twice as long. Pause time times two. Let's try that. Awesome. So now we're getting that nice animation. So that is how we can implement Carol on our own using basic JavaScript. Now it is your turn to go in and implement some Carol commands for yourself.